So now what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to open up this uh, file explorer and what I'm going to do now is I've moved the Greg's Linux server so you'll, you'll basically see this so you'll see the Greg's Linux server kp keypair final.pem file I've moved this in to the shared folder so you might then say what do we do with this pem file well what we've got to do is we've got to change the format of this pem file into a basically a ppk format how do we do that well what we're going to do is we're going to rely on two pieces of software to basically connect now to change the format and then connect so i'm going to go into wordpad here and just open up this and i've got two links here so the first link is putty and the second link is this putty gem so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this paste this into internet um, into my browser and what I'm going to do is paste this link and hit enter to that. And you could save this to your own um, basically machine or VM, but I'm going to just for simplicity, I'm just going to run it from here. So essentially what this is, this is our putty key key generator. And what we've got to do is we're going to load um, basically an RSA file now. And that RSA file is basically our key pair. So what I might need to do is, you can see straight away when I go to look for this file, it's directing me to this folder, but nothing's showing up. So what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we click on this little down arrow, and um, this putty private key, and ensure to click all files. Once we do that, we'll then be able to see our PEM file. Once we click on open to that, it should load up, and it's in this case, it's basically saying successfully imported foreign key, um, and it basically then says you need to use the save private key command to save it um, to save it in Putty's own format. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to click on save private key. And once I do that, it says, do you want to, um, are you sure you want to save this key without a, a passphrase to protect it? That's absolutely fine. If we wanted to add another layer of security, we could add a passphrase, but I'm not going to do that at this point. I'm going to click on yes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this again, Greg's. Um, key pair, that's fine. Greg's KP. Okay, and it's going to save it in this PPK format. I'm going to save it there. And I'm simply just going to um, exit out of this now. So what I'm now going to do, guys, is I can close my, well, I'm going to use my browser in just a moment because what I want to do now is I want to download Putty. So let's copy Putty. Let's go back to my Internet Explorer. And this time I'm going to paste that and I'm going to run Putty. So I'm going to run, here's Putty. And one of the things that Putty is going to require is it's going to say, hey, okay, I see you want to SSH into an instance. So here I've set it to SSH. It's already selecting port 22, so that's all good. But what I also need to, to, to do is I need to give the public IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my, um, my server here. So let's select our server in the cloud. And what I'm going to do is, I can see there's my public IP address. So what I'm going to do is just bring up that my VM again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that IP address into my, basically, putty window. So it's 100.25.47.110. Okay. And what I need to then do, guys, is I've got to go down here now. Although it's selecting 22, port 22, SSH, that all looks good. What I need to do now is I need to go down here to connection and SSH settings, and then I need to click on this auth tab. Okay, so I need to press auth and just select the auth. And what you'll notice here then is it gives, and it's, 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 it's pretty small here, guys, so please bear with me if, it's, if you're having difficulty seeing this. But basically what we need to do is we need to provide a private key file for authentication. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select browse and I'm going to select that PPK file that we that we created just a few moments ago. I'm going to click on open to that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose open. And what this should do is it's going to launch basically a try to launch a connection to my EC2 instance on the cloud. Okay. So again, what I've had to do there is I've had to now again the, the server is saying, "Hey, are you sure you want to connect to this host?" And there it's his fingerprint. I'm going to say yes to that. And then what we're going to need to do, guys, is, and let's just see if I can make this a little bit bigger so we can see this. Let's just see if I can adjust the properties there because it is very, very small. Let me just see if I can go change settings and let's go to our appearance. 
and this mightn't be any harm guys if this is if this is happening on our own machines let's put it up to 20 so it gives us um, a little bit of an improvement okay that's hopefully a lot better guys so what I'm gonna need to do now is I'm gonna need to type in my user so that the default user for uh, the, this this AMI that I selected is EC2 dash user and once I do that guys it's going to authenticate me using that key pair so notice I didn't have to type in a password it's using this key pair so now where where am I so I can essentially go uh, present working directories to see so I can see now I'm logged into this particular EC2 instance I'm using obviously what what steps have I done I've basically converted that initial PEM key that private key into the format that this putty software will recognize this PPK and then I've used the putty client to connect to my server from um, obviously this Windows virtual machine so just one one or two things that I'd like to show you guys actually when I'm on this particular server so the first thing I want to just just point out guys is if for example you wanted to see so at the moment I haven't tested the, the web server is it running so what I could do guys is I could go back to my server for a moment copy that public address and let's just see is my web server running so for example can I access my web server from the global internet so let's give that a try okay let's let's see and we can see that it's good news guys you can see this is my message that I had typed in from my bootstrap file okay so again this looks good it's basically showing us that we can access this web server across into the um, VPC into basically the public subnet I've got connectivity so that's that's great also guys if you wanted to look at the user data or that script and let's say it, it didn't come up and let's say you wanted to check that you could indeed do that you could go to instance settings and basically what you could do is you could go to edit user data so in here what you could do is you could see so for example you might remember I needed to put that space in so if your basically web server didn't load up guys this is a place where you could check okay so go back in here and check that user data so that bootstrap program that's all fine if you wanted to do that actually from basically your instance guys there is a way and you can do it using what's called a curl command so if I bring back up my instance for a moment I'll just show you this and before I show you the curl command let's also show you you might say but Greg you, you, you basically downloaded the the private key but where did the public key go well the public key went onto the EC2 instance where is that well if I do an LS I don't see anything but if I do an LS for example dash a to show me all files what we'll see actually is there's a hidden folder in here called s.ssh so you can see the dot or the, the folder is called ssh it's hidden them so what i could do is i could go cd dot ssh and what i could do in here is i can see an authorized underscore keys file so if i go cat authorized and use the tab key to finish that off what i can see is this is that public key showing so if I make that nice and big there, I can see the public key showing. And there you can see it, guys. Okay, and all of this there, it's showing me this RSA public key. Just another quick one before we go here, guys. I mentioned about if I wanted to see the user data from, for example, um, this particular machine, I could use the curl command. And then what I need to do is I need to remember a basically a particular um, web address. So that web address is 169 dot two five four dot one six nine dot two five four and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, type in latest so latest forward slash user dash data and what this should show me is it should show me my script that I launched at the very start so you can see this is obviously our script that we launched okay and it's wrapping around here okay so again that was curl with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 169.254.169.254 forward slash latest forward slash user dash data and that will give us this details also okay guys so in this particular tutorial what we've done is we've basically launched an EC2 instance we've basically used and um, we've created a security group to open up ports 80 and 22 
We've created our key pair. We've noticed that basically our public key goes up onto our EC2 instance. We've downloaded our private key and they need to work in conjunction in order to connect. We've, we've made the note to say that keep your private key private, put it somewhere secure on your computer. Um, and basically then what we've done is we've used the two programs, in fact, we've used basically um, PuttyGen to change that PEM format into a PPK format. And then we've basically used Putty, the client, to SSH from our Windows machine. Okay, guys, um, I hope you found that useful and thank you for viewing. Speak to you soon.